So what I wanted to talk to you about was my uh, perspective on the context of our uh, main type of dance hall in Texas. And it's something that uh, a number of us have been studying for a number of years. And uh, I'll tell you, it's a gradual eye-opening and evolution of understanding. And so I think it's, it's constantly evolving. But uh, so I want to talk about Who are these people that came to Texas and established these halls? And then what are the building types? And what's significant about them? Uh, so <clears throat> for some strange reason, Texas became an object of immigration out of Europe in the middle of the 19th century. The first immigration starts in 1840. It's primarily German. But over the next 40 years, some couple million people come to Texas. And they're mostly from Central Europe, a relatively small area of Central Europe that comprises what we now call the Czech Republic, Poland, Germany, Austria, and some others. But the fascinating thing is, this is not easy to do in 1840, to do this. Now they might stop in New York and then go around like this, or New Orleans. It's a big deal. And so here's the basic. This is this is just a quick glimpse of some of the halls. And this is a this is a portion. This is not all. This is not all the halls. But you'll notice sort of how they're clustered a lot down in this area. This is this is a geographically fairly large area. There's Houston and there's San Antonio. And there's Austin and there's Dallas up there. And so one of the things that I love John up here in your talk because there's so many commonalities of, between the cultures of South Louisiana and South Texas. And of course one of those is this family aspect. And it was the first thing that struck me about the traditional dance halls. Uh, in college, I just thought, well, that's just so cool that, you know, old people and little kids and uh, young couples and everybody is all in the same place and, there, and, there's, no, and, and it's, there's no real problem. You know, nothing is going wrong. So who are these, who are the cultures that came to Texas early on. Well, <clears throat> by and large, uh, Germans, and I took some examples, if you've ever been to Texas, you may recognize some of these names, and you may not, but, so Luckenbach, Green, Welcome Hall, Cat Spring are examples. In the, in the Czech tradition, we have something called the SPJST, and here's a perfectly good Czech place name. Uh, and then the Czechs uh, have a lot of church associated halls, interestingly enough. There's some Alsatians out in the western, just west of San Antonio, the Polish south of San Antonio. We know of two Swiss originating halls, a number of really important Tejano halls in South Texas, and then some uh, African American halls, notably Wright's Park. And I, I made a note to myself down here, you know, I'm, my heritage is primarily Scots-Irish. Well, we don't have any halls, you know. But 
our music is really embedded in the, the Texas sound. So I just made it up, just so you know, you know, for any of those Irish people, there's probably a lot of Irish people in Louisiana. <laughs> right, okay. So anyway, so <clears throat> what are the time periods? Well, our halls, uh, about, as you can see, about 20% 20, uh, 20 of them were built prior to 1890. And this is the halls we know about. And of course, you know, we find new ones all the time, so this will change. But So about half of them are between 1890 and 1910, and then it tapers off uh, pretty rapidly towards the, uh, uh, the war. So, uh, so more than, substantially more than half are built prior to 1910. So if we break this down, now we're going back and look at the cultures of origin. Uh, almost half are we would consider to be German, about a third are Czech. And this number on the Polish is too low. And of course, there's like two Swiss halls. I throw them in because it's, it's really interesting to me. But now we've also discovered a couple of Norwegian halls, right, Steve? So, and then quite a few Tejano halls and some African American halls as well. So, Steve's are primarily responsible for the inventory. And I just put this number up here. This is a ballpark number. I'm sure he'll, he'll correct that when you hear from him. But the inventory is well over 500. So, this is, this is a very old picture. This is about 1870. Uh, it's a round hall. So, I'm just going to throw out my big thesis right now, so everybody, you know, think about it. So this is an 1870 census map of this uh, foreign parentage. Well, uh, check this out. This is, this is essentially immigrant populations, and notice how well defined that boundary is. I find that really interesting. And then there are, of course, there are pockets. You can see little splotches of color here and there. But then you come down here and you look, well, here, here's y'all. There's, uh, there's past Christian, and there's uh, New Orleans. And right there, I think, but right there and right there are where we are. And then even right down here in the sw really swampy parts right there. And then look over at Texas. We have this funny U-shape thing here and a real big splotch there. And you can't see it, but there's this little tiny splotch right there. Those are our two main ports of entry, Galveston and Indianola. And so that's where the immigrants are coming ashore. And then down here, of course, is a Spanish or Tejano uh, population on the border. What's the year now? 1870. What is it, what is it Foreign parentage. So this is immigrant. So this, is, this would be essentially first generation um, immigrants, because your parents would have been born somewhere else. It's a it's a map of immigrant. It's an immigrant map, right? Immigrant settlement map. So what's common? Of what John talked about, and I think what everybody in Louisiana knows is, you know, this it's, it, this social dancing thing is a very strong defining characteristic. And as it is also here in Louisiana, and it is also in Texas, and it is also in that way in northern Mexico and south Texas. And so it's interesting that the strongest cultures of social dancing in the United States historically have been like this. Even though the cultures are very distinct.
Any ideas on that? Well, they're religion. That's one. Another one is, I think, is isolation. And the other one is survival. If you notice that the, the, at this time in 1870, there are no railroads in Texas. Survival rate from Indianola to the hill country is 50%. So this is a very difficult place to live. This, there are Indian predations all the way to here. So most of this area is still extremely dangerous to live in. Uh, and I don't know if y'all been to that part of Texas, but it's really, it's not exactly a walk in the park sometimes as far as uh, making a, uh, an existence. Now this. This area in here is very fertile, but out here, uh, you know, it, it can get really dry and so forth. But, so one is survival, and one is isolation or lack of assimilation, and the other concept is sort of placemaking or purposeful, you know, cultural sustainment. In other words, you're, you're doing things to sustain the culture which you come from. You're making, you're doing, you're purposely uh, continuing your culture. So we just blow this up a little bit, and we, and we put the, we put the, uh, start putting some dance halls on the picture. Okay. Okay. So what I did was overlay. Uh, these are. The colored splotches are uh, areas of uh, language. It's a language map uh, to, to define a, a some, well, some of this information comes from a language map, so the, the mapping of German dialects, and some of it comes from, from uh, settlement data. And these are so I'll just so the, the blue, purpley blue is German. And so to get you oriented, San Antonio is here, right there. And Austin is like right there. And there's Dallas and there's Houston. And this is that horseshoe looking boundary that we saw. In the 1870s. So uh, the brown is African American settlement. The purple, I mean, the pink, hot pink is Czech. The rust color is Polish, and there's there, 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 and there, and there, and there. And then, uh, is there another color? Probably. So <laughs> it's unfortunate that the the yellow and the the, the, the the little pins are not all the same color. What this means is that the hall is gone. You know, that's how it's coated. But uh, the background is the settlement area. And so you'll notice there's really strong correlation. Look at this, look at how many halls are in this area. So this is really the largest, these four counties represent the largest number of dance halls per square foot or whatever in Texas. In one county, Fayette County at one time, there were 65 dance halls. There were about 30 something left in that one county, and some towns have as many as four dance halls. There's a town out here in West Texas, there's only one, we're showing one thing right there, but that's actually three dance halls in this one little town, town out there. Rowena? It's a little Czech place, Czech and German.
So we just zoom in a little bit and we look a little bit closer at this. And so we see this is the, this is the uh, German settlement in the hill country that they, they referred to at the time as Western Texas. And, uh, and then you can see these little enclaves. This is the first Polish settlement in North America right down here. Uh, and you can see the uh, Czech settlement areas defined there. So there's this very strong correlation. And this actually, that map works good for predicting where to go look for some. So, so who were the builders and the sponsors of these buildings? Well, uh, most of these are civic, mutual benefit, mutual aid societies, fraternal, or some kind of association. And then some of them were built by individuals and usually used by the community. So for example, we have this uh, organization called the Slavonic Benevolent Order of the State of Texas, SPJST. There's about, I don't know, 30 halls at least of that type. The KJT is a Czech organization. Sons of Herman is a German equivalent of SPJST. Of course, we all know about Knights of Columbus. Uh, but we have this other one, it's a little women's Catholic uh, organization, KJZT, has some halls. But by and large, a lot of the halls fall into this group. And they're association halls, and they're in German, they're, they're called Verein, which means association. And there'll be agricultural Verein, rifle clubs, athletic associations, like a turn for Ryan, singing clubs, so there will be a singer Rooney Hall or a singer hall. And then there's cultural organizations. So I'm just going to throw this out there. Again, it's not that the, I don't like these other kinds of buildings, but just to get some nomenclature down, um, and John Sharp mentioned this too, we make a distinction between a honky-tonk and a real dance hall. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But So here's these other types of, of things, and we have these, of course, and a lot of these are a lot of fun. It's, but they're not exactly the same. So we have a honky tonk, a nightclub, a saloon is different. A roadhouse is a little bit different. What they call the old, the, the dance hall in the old west is is different still. It's a, it's a it's a euphemism usually for a gambling hall or a or a brothel. A juke joint. We we're going to be talking. Y'all be talking about those. Ballrooms, USOs, state park pavilions, seaside pavilions, or gambling houses. So these all kind of uh, get commingled, and sometimes people use the terms uh, or call them a dance hall. And we think that there's a a large portion of our dance halls fall into this category. This is the first SPJST hall. And this is a very typical picture of the whatever event it is. Everybody's there. Here's the band. It's very patriotic, both to the culture they came from and to, the, and to America. And these are beautiful halls. This is unusual that it has actual windows. There it is, you can see the actual windows, so that's an event. So a, lot, a surprising number of our most interesting halls are gun clubs. In fact, the oldest gun club in uh, the United States uh, is at Quihi, uh, which is a beautiful hall. And so these guys would go from 
they have a shoot and a, part one be maybe even a march around the area in the shoot and then eat barbecue and then have a big dance. And, uh, and of course children are a big part of the whole dance hall scene even up till today. And then here's a the bunch of guys. They must have heard about the Republican primary. They're gonna, <laughs> gonna have their own party. But so also notice the notice the siding and the window shutters or flaps like John was talking about. So very similar. Notice the amount of brass instruments. Steve will cover a lot of that. I'm not gonna get into that. So here's some more, and this is a round hall. There's some deer antlers right there. This is a pretty nice hall. It has a metal roof. Steve, where is that? Is this Bartlett? No, but he doesn't. And so some of the halls are not just a simple rural barn type, but they're, they're really high end. And uh, we've learned more and more about some of these. Uh, this is probably the queen of Texas dance halls. It's the Garden Verein in Galveston, which is would, would have been just the gateway of, of German immigration to Texas. And this is a fabulous octagonal dance hall from 1880. And this is a little Czech hall at a church. So this is one associated with a with a church festival, the best sausage in. The second best sausage in the United States. <laughs> There's a little, a little hall called Rushka Hall, um, built by a German, and then, then used over time mostly by Czech immigrants. Barn type, so now we'll get a little bit into the types. So this is a barn type. This is very classic uh, uh, style with the lift up window flaps, some metal siding, it's open. This is one of the most amazing halls you will ever see. This is, uh, this is called Anhalt and it's uh, in the hill country, the German hill country. And it is, it uses uh, a tied bowstring arch. And this is common in the German, this is common in some, in quite a few of the German halls use this tied arch. So there's a iron rod and then this beautiful built up arch. Uh, quite a few of the German, it's a sign. If you see this, we say, oh, it must be German. So this is a little bit simpler, more elegant. Uh, this is 1886. It's in a different part of the state. Also of German origin. Again, it's a tied arch, but this uses laminated, a laminated uh, bow, if you will. It's a very pretty building. Same construction. This is a, a part of this building is 1879, and but this is unusual that it has a ceiling, but it's the same basic idea. So this is a, a little bit different style. This is Rice Park. Uh, and that's an African-American hall. It's built about 1930 or 40? 48. 40, 1948. A very popular place um, for Juneteenth celebrations and dances and um, still a vital place with frame. So the opposite of that, of course, is sort of the juke joint. This is in East Texas. So it falls kind of outside of the 
of the, this is more akin, I think, to what you find in Louisiana. And unfortunately, this is a very important place in terms of the musicians, um, blues musicians, but of course it's, it's uh, in the, the disrepair. So some of the halls are two-story. This is a two-story wood frame type. This was built by an individual uh, and is still being run by his daughter, uh, who's getting on in years. But uh, interestingly enough, there's another hall across the road in the town. Is, that's all there is in the town, is the two dance halls. <laughs> And they're both check halls, by the way. So, so this is Cat Spring Agricultural Society Pavilion. Uh, so we have about, uh, and Stephanie Google's an expert on round halls, and, and uh, I think your dissertation was on. Did you do your dissertation on round halls? Yeah. So one of the things uh, is that this is a peculiar and interesting subset, and there are about. I'm going to guess there's about 30 of these, maybe. Steve's uncovered there's several. Been, there has been 36 in all. Yeah, about maybe half of that is still standing. And so there's a, this is a, uh, the inside of a, one that burned, unfortunately. This is a gun club. Again, it's a very nice big hall. It's about maybe 10,000 square feet tall. Um, it's a beautiful hall. Still an active gun club. And this is another gun club. Now this is just this this is sort of two halves. This is like a how do we call this? This is like a elongated round hall with a cross gate in the middle. And it has real windows. So this is another sign we look for. Distinct to a, a character defining trait is what type of window does it have. So this has real windows. Now this is a Czech hall. Nada, Nada means hope in Czech. And this is a, this a kind of a typical siding out in the hill country. A metal siding on wood frame. And then just look at we look at the setting, of course, like we talked about yesterday. Many, many of the halls are in rural or setting or small town. This is this is in the earliest Polish settlement in the United States at Panama Maria. Again, how the windows create ventilation. And each one is different, and, and uh, I find it fascinating to see how they did them different. They open different directions, uh, they're different sizes, and they each, each, each hall has a different latching and propping mechanism, <laughs> you know, to whatever they came up with. And some of them are really uh, fascinating. So, uh, and the floor, that's edge grain, southern pine. Out here, you're going to have cypress, of course. So just to come close to wrapping it up, the, just so along the lines of what John was saying is, you know, you give some, have to give some thought to how we define the dance hall. So I found it real interesting. I think we're similarly defining the hall with a couple of differences. And of course, again, this is uh, this isn't the idea of this isn't to, you know, say, oh well, the other kinds of halls are not good, it's just to define what we're talking about, about these immigrant <laughs> halls. So these are built, purposely built as social uh, or community or so association halls. They're built to house some function that's not dancing. Uh, they're built by an identifiable ethnic group, immigrant group, whichever it is. But, but the, the social dancing is a characteristic activity. So 
And, 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 uh, and just like what John was saying, the, the car that's, that's the, the halls, a lot of them were not built to host dancing only. They had other functions. Distinct from nightclubs, honky-tonks, and bars, the purpose in the time period, starting very early, 1850s, the stated purpose is the development of the mind, body, and sociability. So it's a very, in, the, in these, in these uh, Central European groups, this is very important uh, concept. One other thing is the welcome presence of children. So that's the, really a big difference between a honky-tonk and a Texas dance hall. Everybody feels good about bringing their kids to the dance hall, just like on your Fado, right? Uh, the dance floor is usually large in proportion to the size of the building. You know, it's a, it's a major characteristic. So in a honky tonk, the dance floor may be just a, you know, very small area. But in the dance hall, it's, a, it's the biggest piece usually. And then, just like John said, it's got to be this. And we, they just don't, you know, nowadays, of course, you might find a jukebox, but, but traditionally that's it. And of course, you know, that it goes without saying, you know, social dancing is this. And uh, what the, that kind of dancing is a 19th century European phenomenon that came to the United States in the immigration population and it stuck, and it stuck more in South Texas, Northern Mexico, Louisiana, I think, than any other part of the country, even though the population was the same. Well, that's all I got, if there are any questions. <laughs>